Welcome back to Adobe Live. Thank you all so much for joining me. My name is Cody and I will be your host for the next hour. Here on Power Prompts, if you guys have never witnessed the show before, it is our goal to empower you to power through your art block every week. Every month we have a new theme and every week, every Monday, we create a drawing prompt based around that theme. This month's theme is medieval march and today's prompt week four is apothecary herbs thank you all so much for joining us today and it's so great to see you all hey bliss hey gareth and also thank you james for having such a wonderful um premiere pro dcc that was his first time doing a dcc so very happy for him you did a great job james if you're still there welcome hey rob steve sam good to see you all barbara hi laura welcome you guys hey wade if you guys would love to participate in Power Prompts, feel free to upload your artwork to Instagram with hashtag Adobe Live Power Prompts. And toward the end of the show, we will also be looking at uh, community entries. If you guys would like to check some of those out, we have a handful of ones for this prompt, so I'm looking forward to showing those off. Um, and also, before we get started, I wanted to give you guys, since this is the last prompt of this theme, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a sneak peek for next month's prompt list before we get started here. We can head over to the iPad. I will pop up our new prompt list for next month. It is going to be April showers themed and here are all of your prompts. If you guys would like to get started ahead of time, feel free to do so. It's the same hashtag, uh, just Adobe Live Power Prompts. Um, and I always say on Instagram, if you guys would like to have your artwork shown on stream, just upload it at any point before that, that specific dedicated stream to that um, theme. And I will do my best to show it off on the stream. Um, but yeah, so we have ducks in a puddle, how adorable, cozy rainy window, umbrella and spring flowers. So we're getting into spring, you guys. So I'm looking forward to these ones. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and get going. Um, as you guys, if you guys have been here for some of my other prompts, you will know that I usually have you guys vote on something, whether it be the composition or the color palette. Today, I'm going to have you guys put your favorite herbs in chat, whether it be culinary or maybe you use herbs for other reasons in your life. Um, feel free to drop in your favorite herbs that you love to cook with. I really love rosemary. I don't know about you guys, but I love a good filet mignon with some rosemary. Top notch. All right, so if you guys are new to Fresco, I wanted to um, kind of go through the steps of creating a document as well, because usually I have my document already created. Um, so I am going to, usually for me, I love to work in inches. That's just me. Um, I So typically for, for posting on Instagram, I work by, uh, in an eight by eight inch document. So I have this one saved here right up front because that's the one that I use the most. And then also typically, whoops, also typically I like to personally put down like a, like a kind of a cream color in the background. I don't really like to sketch on pure white. Uh, that's just me. Some artists really love to sketch on gray colors as well. Um, great thing about Fresco too, is that it, it creates automatically a new layer on top of the background layer. So if you start sketching, you're already on a brand new layer. I know we've all experienced the times where we start sketching in a new document in Photoshop and we're sketching on the background layer and nobody likes that. <laughs> so great thing about Fresco, really love that. Um, but I'm going to pop on over to my color palette here. I'm gonna open this. I'm gonna actually close the color wheel because I personally don't really use the color wheel all that much. Oh no, I think, one second you guys, I think my iPad pencil needs reconnecting really quick. One second. Oh boy. Hopefully we don't have to go on a BRB screen. 
please connect iPad pencil. Apple pencil connected. Oh boy. Oh, there we go. Yes. Yes. Okay. The art gods are with us. Okay. Color wheel closed. HSB sliders I do use. And we're going to go to all and then we're going to go to color palette. And I always have my background color saved in my color palette. It's right here. We're just going to use the paint bucket tool and we're going to fill it with pixel because we don't necessarily need a vector layer because we're not doing any kind of graphic design or um, my work is mostly viewed online and it doesn't need to be scaled infinitely. So we're just going to go with pixel and then we're going to make a new layer for sketching. And <laughs> CJ says, this is what happens when your husband steals your Apple pencil. Yes, CJ, <laughs> CJ, my husband has been getting into doing artwork on Fresco and he was using my Apple pencil. So it was connected to his iPad and, and I didn't reconnect it before the stream. <laughs> <laughs> do you all see Cody's snazzy hair? Yes, I, I got my hair dyed this weekend. Thank you for noticing. <laughs> okay, uh, let me let me let me uh, get back into chat because I, I was distracted a little bit, you guys. Okay, okay. Uh, I want to check out all your guys' favorite herbs. Okay, parsley, love it. Um, thyme, very good one. That's a, that's a great one. We got some thyme out on our balcony growing. Um, dill. Rosemary drop biscuits. Ooh, that sounds amazing, Wade. Oh my gosh. Cilantro. Put in chat if you're a lover of cilantro or not. Does cilantro smell or not smell? Taste like soap to you? Apparently, it's uh, kind of a, a genetic thing on whether whether cilantro tastes like soap or not. Um, I actually really love cilantro. Uh, rosemary, lavender, peppermint, curry, sage, spicy stuff. Ooh like um, ginger root too. Ginger root might be a, a fun one to put in kind of different, different like shape. Um, <laughs> cilantro, 100% love it, yes. Um, so in my head, I was kind of thinking of, yeah, rosemary is a really great one. Definitely like cilantro or uh, let's see, lavender's a really good one. Um, <laughs> we've gotten deep into one of Cody's loves. She could talk about herbs and plants all day. Hey, <laughs> well, why do you think I made this prompt? Okay. <laughs> all right. So also before we get going, I am going to go ahead and name our document. Um, so let's just name it, you know, power prompts, herbs. And I will just go ahead and do a hard save. All right. So also, I, I think for the composition that I'm thinking, you guys, is I'm going to do kind of like a flat lay. Um, and I've done this a few times. I've done it on my, my art account with like uh, jam jars and um, some other like small similar objects. And I like to kind of like fit them into each other, almost like a puzzle. And I'm going to, since I don't think that Fresco has guides yet, correct me if I'm wrong, if you guys know how to turn on guides, in Fresco, that would be amazing. But if not, I'm just going to go ahead and use the um, the ruler tool. I usually really like to kind of give myself about like an inch. Oops, I am coloring with the background color. <laughs> Let's try not to do that. Okay. Let's try that again. Whoop. No, I, I'm still on the background. There we go. Okay. There we go. I usually try to give myself like an inch. Whoop. Oh God. I'm so bad at using this ruler tool, you guys. I always like, my my fingers always slip on it so badly. Okay. I usually like to give myself like an inch of a border to kind of fit my work into. For some reason, it's not snapping completely to the edge of the document, but that's okay. We'll work with it. Um, but giving this, the reason that I do this is just to kind of give the artwork a little bit of breathing room around the edge of the uh, document. And it kind of just, I don't know, it looks, it looks really classy from far away, I think. Select so like grid in taskbar. Grid, let's see, in taskbar. Oh, grid. Grids, let's see. Okay, so they have a grid they definitely have a uh, like a graph 
but like I don't think I don't think that they have like the the you know like the little guides that you can like pull down from the rulers in Photoshop on both sides. That would be really helpful. I feel like that would be a great addition to Fresco. Oh, let's go ahead and turn off this graph. Oh, they have the perspective graph in here too. That's really cool. Um, okay, turn off grids and alignment guides. Let's just turn it all off, but it's still on. Why is it still on? Grids turn off. There we go. Okay. So I just turned down the opacity of my little, um, a little frame here and I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer. And I am using the happy HB pencil tool by actually not right now. I'm on the default, uh, pencil brush which is also a really great one, but typically for, um, uh, sketching, I use Kyle Webster's happy HB sketching brush. And welcome in you guys if you're if you're uh, just coming in we are just about to start on our drawing prompt today which is apothecary herbs um and if you guys would like to upload your work online feel free to do so with hashtag adobe live power prompts um so let's go ahead and kind of like start like throwing some shapes in i'm thinking about when i was kind of imagining this project i was thinking about like having maybe uh like a, a, a sprig of, of rosemary coming up like here. And then I also kind of imagined maybe a piece, or I'm sorry, like a little, maybe like a little like apothecary jar kind of like here with maybe something in it, maybe with like some, I don't know, some lavender buds or something like that. That might be cute, but it just kind of like changes up the um, the composition a little bit instead of only just having like sprigs because that's kind of what a lot of herbs look like. They're just sprigs of leaves, um, kind of like just adding in different shapes. Also, that's why I feel like maybe ginger root could be a good addition too. Like maybe we could throw in some ginger root like Ginger root's a really fun shape. It can kind of be like anything. Ginger root's kind of like, kind of like one of those deals. One of, one of something like that. It's got like little knobbies on it. Something like that. And then like maybe, maybe like some little sprigs of lavender possibly. And maybe like with a little like tie to tie them together. That might be cute, right? Something like that. Um, have you guys ever made your own homemade herbs, like dr dried your own herbs, like in the, in the little bundles, like on, uh, like hanging, hanging? I've dried flowers that way. Um, I would really like to get into drying my own herbs once I can start growing my own herbs. Um, I think that that's pretty cool. Okay, this is not how rosemary looks. Definitely not, but um, I will bring up some reference when we actually go to add some detail to it. Um, so we have this big open area here. Um, let's see, what did you guys suggest? Maybe, I think dill might be a good one. Let's look up what dill looks like specifically because dill has a much different texture, not Dillard's, Google, I don't want to, I don't want to look up Dillard's, just Dill. <laughs> okay, Dill, Dill kind of looks like, like carrot tops almost, like little fluffy, little fluffy, fluffy green carrot tops. Uh, maybe I'll flip this one upside down. Um, and maybe we'll kind of like curve it into this shape here. And it's kind of got like these fluffy, fluffy doodads, you know? It's actually pretty fluffy almost all the way down the stock. Fluffy, fluffy. Okay. 
And then maybe two, like we could put in, um, of course, I always really love my hash marks. I love hash marks because they're great for like filling in space, but also in this context, it works really well because for one, it could be maybe like the little hash marks are like just like pieces of the dill leaves kind of like floating about, or it could also be like um, lavender blossoms, just little pieces, little knobbies of lavender kind of spread throughout, kind of just filling in this space here. And maybe, let's see, what could be in this jar? We could, we could do like, we could do lavender, maybe like lavender oil or something in the jar. I don't know. I guess we'll figure it out as we go. Wow, my hand is really shaky. If you guys uh, struggle with shaky hands and you need some some cleaner lines, don't forget about smoothing. It's really, really helpful. I have noticed that it's a lot stronger in Fresco than it is in Photoshop. Um, or I'm sorry, it's a lot stronger in Photoshop than it is in Fresco. So I tend have a tendency to kind of bump it up quite a bit in Fresco, whereas in Photoshop, I leave it at like, like 30 or 20 percent um but in fresco i bump it up to like 70. okay so now if you guys see um of course we don't have all of the details yet but if we turn off our little grid here and we zoom out now we have these um pieces kind of like puzzled together and it just has a, a really nice border on the outside and it, it looks very intentional rather than having everything kind of go up to the edge of the document um, I feel like doing like a series of prints like these would be really nice. Like, like whatever theme you're, you're doing, um, just like having like a three set print of some kind of maybe different objects or something would look really pretty. Hey, Kiss My Creative, welcome. Good to see you. <laughs> Sam says, just watch the shoe ads begin for the next few months on every page you go to. Oh just on an accidental search, of course. <laughs> uh, Rob says, absolutely, Italian parsley, dill, sage, they all dry nicely. Oh, you've you've uh, dried your own herbs, that's so cool. Welcome in everyone, good to see you. Thank you so much for joining. Um, okay, so I'm gonna, let's bring back those um, lines, just in case as we add in more detail, I wanna make sure that whatever that detail is, it doesn't go over those guidelines. So I'm gonna lower the opacity of this right here and, or the, uh, the original sketch. I'm gonna make a new layer on top of that. And I'm gonna bring up some images of Rosemary. I, I'm sorry, I didn't put, I should have put in some, reference images for you guys to see on the iPad, but I did not think of that. So I am going to, uh, I have some reference images here. I'm just kind of Googling as we go um, of some rosemary and I'm just gonna go ahead and start start adding, adding some of this in. So, oops, my iPad almost just flew off my desk. Ooh, okay. So, oops, that is, I'm on the text tool. That is not what I want. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there we go. It's <laughs> gonna kind of like add in these little like rosemary leaves. And I don't need to, for the way that I work, I don't necessarily need to add in every single detail because sometimes I will actually add in more detail in the coloring process um, than I do um, any other time, um, just because it's kind of faster that way, um, because my coloring process isn't always exact to like 100% to, um, my sketch always. So um, sometimes I will add in detail at a later time. So I don't make, make more work for myself basically.
<laughs> Does hanging flowers dry them? I've only ever pressed them. Yes, yes. You can do the same thing with flowers that you do uh, with herbs. You can hang them upside down. I have dried flowers that way. I've just never done herbs before. Um, but pressing flowers is really cool. My, my mom had a, a flower press when I was a kid um, and um, we were always big into gardening and um, she always would press um, like leaves and, and pansies and all different kinds of flowers that she grew. It's pretty neat. Can like put them into like homemade bookmarks and stuff like that. I might put another little branch just down here, maybe. As long as I'm not going, again, over my little guideline there. Oop, and I just did, of course. Something like that. <laughs> New hobby incoming, of course, of course. <laughs> also, um, some other herbs that we didn't mention, honorable mentions, definitely, garlic. One of my favorites um garlic could also be a pretty cool one to put in just because it's a different shape again like if we wanted to um do something other than the little lavender jar we could throw in a a little garlic bulb here that looks more like a pumpkin but you know you guys get it <laughs> That definitely looks like a pumpkin. <laughs> Let's just ignore that. Um, but if you guys are working on your own um, uh, herb drawings, that's another one. Also, um, echinacea is a less commonly known herb. Um, I actually didn't even know it was an herb until more recent time. Uh, it's also known as the purple cone flower. Um, and it kind of looks like this. It's pretty like bright, like fuchsia. And it looks like this where the petals come down and the, the middle of it sticks up like a cone. Um, they actually, you can actually use pretty much the entire plant for um, herbal things. Um, all right, anyway. Let's go ahead and start adding um, detail for the ginger root, I think. I'm gonna pop back on over to this layer here. I think I like this kind of overall shape that I went with, but I'm just gonna kind of like, uh, like refine it a little bit more. Just kind of using that um, that smoothing tool to really get um, some nice even lines here. And on a different layer, I'm gonna add in some of the little stripies that um, Ginger has. Oops. And also a nice trick with um, working on the iPad is that if you're struggling, like if you're really zoomed in here and you're struggling to make like really big lines, like just remember that you can always zoom out and you don't have to work so hard to make such big lines. I actually just did that right now. Um, I was really zoomed in and I was trying to make these lines inside the ginger and I was like, ugh, I gotta, I gotta do huge strokes, but I really in all reality don't. You just gotta zoom back out. And now I only have to uh, move my hand a tiny bit to make those lines. Kind of trying to add some texture here, maybe with some more little, some more little lines and little indents and such. RB says echinacea is a North American herb, not doesn't grow in Europe. I did not know that. That's really interesting. 
Yeah, my mom actually, I, I grew up with purple cone flower a lot because my mom grew it in our yard. Um, and like I said, I, I just didn't know until recently that it was an herb or is an herb. Okay, I'm going to throw in the little sprigs of lavender here now. I'm gonna try to, oops, gonna try to kind of cross them in a somewhat nice looking way. I'm gonna scooch these guys over a little bit. Just gonna use the move tool here and I'm gonna scooch, 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 angle them down and scooch them over. I kind of want the, the middle stem to be the longest um, because that will kind of give a nice um, hierarchy. It will look kind of more natural um, like when you're making a bundle of anything, typically, whether it's flowers or anything, typically you want the center part to be the topmost point. Um, so I want this, this branch right here to be the tallest one. So I might actually make this guy a little bit shorter. And then to give it even more depth, we will make a third one that's a little bit taller. So now, so now we have kind of like a staggered, uneven, um, middle, tall, short. Um, so it kind of adds some interest there. Um, and for the lavender, let's see, lavender leaves are very um, thin. I guess it depends on the type of lavender, of course. Um, but let me look, look it up really quick. Yeah, they're kind of like thin and spindly a little bit. Kind of look almost like, like this. Something like that. And then we have, uh, of course, the little purple lavender like flowers coming out here. And of course, let's not forget that some of these, um, some of these bulbs actually are coming towards us. So we have ones that are on this side of the branch that are um, facing towards us and not just on the outside edge. That's a really easy way to kind of just go back and add in a little bit of dimension instead of having to like really try to think about the perspective or anything like that. I'm going to go all the way down here and then go back up. Oh, and also, you know what, let me redo that because sometimes lavender isn't always like perfectly straight going up. Sometimes it has like little pockets where there are no bulb, uh, like any little, I, I keep calling them bulbs, but they're not bulbs, little um, like florets. Hey, Odari, welcome to the stream. How are you doing? Good to see you. So like, let's add a little floret leaf there. And let's go back and maybe add in a couple in here coming towards us. And one on the bottom layer as well. Like, let's maybe erase like one or two of these guys to make it just look a little bit more natural, a little bit more sparse. And we'll go like that. And I'll do the same with the top. Let's like erase some of these guys up here.
Okay. Now we're just about done with this one. Looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and do a hard save. Don't forget to save your work, everyone. And let's throw in some little hash marks here and there. Again, really nice filler, filler lines. Oh, you know what? And I think for the ginger, a lot of the time, obviously it's kind of cut off of the root. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna have that edge of the root there. I think that I think that might help read it a little bit better. And then maybe you can see like the inside of the the root rings a little bit. Cool. Okay. Let's go ahead and add in the dill. Okay. So fluffy, fluffy, fluffy. Think very fluffy. <laughs> Lurking to Bruce. Uh, no problem, you guys. Love the lurkers. Thank you all. Just really appreciate you all being here, of course. Um, and also, um, don't forget to submit your work um, online if you would like to. And um, I will be posting, if you didn't see the beginning of this stream, by the way, um, I showed off next month's prompt list. If you didn't see that, feel free to watch the replay. Um, but I'll also be posting my um, uh, the prompt list probably, probably tomorrow. Um, so you guys can get a nice head start on um, next Monday. Um, let's see, next Monday, I think the prompt was... Shoot, now I forget what it was. <laughs> um, but we will see. We will see. Don't forget to watch the watch uh, the replay and uh, watch my Instagram as well um, for any updates on that. Okay, let's throw in the dill here. So same kind of thing with the dill. Kind of want to do... Oh, I also want to add in like a little like string kind of tying the lavender together. That might be cute. Um, and same thing going on with the dill. I kind of want to do a little bit of a, um, like a bundle type deal. And maybe we'll do four. This guy's gotta be a little bit shorter in that case. Okay, so dill definitely has a lot more kind of um, varied um, branch length, and it's also it's also very pliable. Um, so I'm just gonna have like the whole thing kind of like kind of curved down, like it's laying down. <laughs> The shape of Cody's ginger root reminds me of Squidward's bold and brash. I don't know. I actually don't know what you're referring to, sadly. I I I I can't believe I'm not getting a SpongeBob reference, but I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> okay. Um so that looks pretty good. I'm gonna actually lower the opacity a little bit more on this guy so we can really see what we're working with. Yeah, actually, so for the dill, I really like this shape, but I think I'm gonna just move it over a little bit because it's kind of crowding the rosemary, but there's more um, negative space on the right side next to the lavender. So I'm gonna, I just used the um, kind of brush, the brush selection tool. And now I'm gonna use the move tool and we're gonna use these little arrows here 
to kind of just slowly push the sky over a little bit. Am I on the wrong layer? Is that? I am on the wrong layer. Of course. <laughs> there we go. Now he's getting moved over. And deselect. And I might also, since it seems like we have kind of like this big, like weird empty space here because of the shape of the ginger, I might kind of mess with the orientation of the ginger as well. Hi, Hassan, welcome to the stream. How are you doing? Thank you so much for joining. Oh no, our dog is woofing. <laughs> we had to put her away because of the stream. Um, <laughs> oh, CJ's showing me Squidward. <laughs> um, hopefully, hopefully our dog isn't too loud for you guys. I don't know if she's coming through the mic or not, but you know what? Maybe, maybe since we have this um, this ginger shape here, I'll, I'll I'll tell you what. Let's do uh, in the words of Bob Ross. Um, I'm going to move the ginger here because we kind of have actually a nice shape going on. Whoops. We have a nice shape going on like here in this general direction. It kind of fits into that space like a, like a puzzle piece. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of get rid of these lines here. And I might... I might actually move it, it down a little bit because I can go all the way down to um, our guidelines here. So I'm going to move it all the way down, all the way down to almost touching the guides there. Kind of give all these give all these pieces some breathing room here. Deselect. I'm going to get rid of this mark here, and I'm also going to move the dill down a little bit. Like that. Maybe squish it just a little bit. Of course, I haven't added all the leaves to the dill yet, but we will get there. <laughs> Let's turn off the guides really quick so we can just see again, kind of see what we're working with here. Um, and I think I think I'm gonna add in a garlic bulb, garlic clove, garlic, garlic cloves. <laughs> Steve says there's been an epidemic of badge fall, fallen, five badges falling off the sheriffs. I know badge, badge thieves. That's what it really is. It's it's mod mod badge thieves. Um, I don't know what the deal is with that. <laughs> it started with me and then it seems like sequentially every single other mod has been losing their badge for some reason. I don't know what happened, but we're, we're in the midst of fixing it. Okay, I'm going to add in um, some ginger, not ginger, garlic. We already have enough ginger. <laughs> I think maybe also um, my, I think the reason that my ginger looked a little bit pumpkin pumpkin shaped earlier is because I kind of like puffed it out a little bit too much, whereas ginger kind of comes down and then puffs out like this. This is why reference is so important, you guys, um, because nobody can remember what every single thing looks like, you guys. Don't forget to look up reference. It helps a lot. I've actually drawn ginger before. And in this case, typically, like if I wasn't online, I would actually usually reference my own artwork to see how I've drawn something in the past. But um, since I don't have that file on my iPad, I can't do that. Um, but that's also something that um, I would highly suggest doing. If it's something that you know you have successfully drawn before, referencing your own artwork can be really helpful. Um, and then I'm also on top of that. Going to oops. I'm 
make it a little bit bigger, I think. I kind of just kind of turn it a little bit and see how it fits in well into this into this uh, this space here. And then I'm also going to do like some separate, um, some separate uh, ginger cloves. I think that that might maybe um, help it read a little bit more like ginger. Not ginger, why do I keep saying ginger? Garlic. <laughs> There. I think that that kind of fills in that space a little bit better. <laughs> I love garlic. Put it on anything. It's always good. Uh, garlic bread. Good one. That's a, that's a, that's a good option. Uh, Hassan, um, uh, do you know someone who specializes in web development? I need to ask uh, for help. You know, I don't personally specialize in web development, but we do have a lot of um, videos on the Creative Cloud YouTube channel. If you'd want to check that, check that out. Um, uh, just search like Adobe Live um, uh, XD streams would be a good web development. Um, we also have XD master classes on Fridays. Um, you can look at the schedule down below for Adobe Live and just scroll to the right a little bit and you'll be able to see Friday's schedule. Um, there's been tons of master classes um, for XD by Howard Pinsky. I believe he also has his own YouTube channel as well. Um, you can totally look. We have we have so many web development videos. Okay, so let's go back to the dill and kind of like add some more detail to that because he's looking a little bare, right? Um, okay, so dill kind of just like abandoned the dill. Sorry about that, dill. Dill pickles. Um, okay, so it looks like he's he's kind of got dill has kind of got like leaves like this where it's got like leaves and then little leaves and then little leaves off the off of the little leaves. Um, his leaves kind of look like almost just like smaller branches, um, but like a little bit more whimsical. <laughs> so like instead of like straight, the leaves are gonna kind of look like this, I guess, sort of. And We'll of course do some leaves off of the end there. Something like that. That looks that looks that looks all right. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Liz says when I used to popcorn, when I used to popcorn at home, I would mix uh, powdered garlic, onion powder, sage, and red pepper. Ooh, that sounds so good. We have a seasoning that we really love. Um, that's Parmesan garlic. Oh my gosh, it's chef's kiss. So good. Put it on everything. I don't want these leaves to look, I'm, I'm kind of like starting to make them look like bull horns. I don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna try to kind of try to tone down the whimsy a little bit, I think. <laughs> getting, getting a little crazy here. Kind of looking like Maleficent horns. I think this one might be a little bit too tall. That's better. It was getting a little bit too too crowded to the lavender. He needs he needs some breathing room. 
dangerous levels of whimsy, says Sam. Yes, I, I need it. Need to back down a little bit there. <laughs> Scale it back. Okay, you guys. <laughs> I like the use of popcorn as a verb. I used to I used to pop corn. <laughs> Rob says, no, abandoned the dill that puts us in a pickle. <laughs> I have actually, over the course of the past couple of years, been learning how to ferment food from home. I've been making um, homemade kefir, and I've also just recently made, um, I also make sauerkraut, um, and I just made my first batch of uh, pickles, homemade pickles. They didn't turn out the best, but they, I think they definitely would have turned out better if the store had had dill. Um, so I had to use different pickling spices and it just like, wasn't great, but they were pickles. They did turn into pickles, which I was very proud of. Um, so next time, next time, definitely going to use dill. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Still need still need more whimsy, but not too much whimsy. We're still we still got some empty branches here. So I, I'm still still gotta add a little bit more. So bear with me, you guys. I know this might not be the most entertaining thing to watch ever, me adding whimsy to everything, but um <laughs> but it will end soon, I promise. <laughs> okay. It's very therapeutic to watch. Nice. <laughs> um, okay. It's distracting me from work. Oh, I know that feeling, of course. <laughs> um, okay, one more, one more branch of whimsy, and then we will move on to different whimsy um, somewhere else. Whenever you add herbs to your dinner tonight, you'll think of me and my whimsy. My whimsy. Um, Okay, I'm thinking that I might maybe after the stream rework the shape of the the um, rosemary because I'm not really feeling it very much. Um, it doesn't really look very natural as opposed to the other things. But I mean that happens a lot. Like the first thing that you cr like draw in your artwork kind of does like, doesn't always turn out the way you want it to because you're kind of still warming warming up. Um, so I think I might revisit that because I'm liking the shape of everything else, but the the rosemary is kind of throwing me off. Um, but you know, instead of the bottle, since we kind of moved the ginger over a little bit, I think instead of the bottle, I might add in some echinacea um, because I think that that would might, uh, might be a nice addition because it's purple and um, it, well, the lavender's purple, but the echinacea is kind of more of like a, um, like a magenta color. So that might be um, just like a nice color addition to the palette might be just kind of like a pop. Um, so I'm gonna do this on a separate layer. Because <laughs> my creative says, I refuse to eat herbs ever again unless they're whimsical. I agree, absolutely. Go to the grocery store. Excuse me, I see that you have dill, but do you have whimsical dill? <laughs> okay, anyway. Um, <laughs> let's throw in, I think I might just do like, Let's see, how do I want to do this? Um, hmm. Let's see. Let's erase some of these hash marks so we have some more space. 
and rosemary. Although, you know, another one that might be cool would be cilantro because it has like a very unique leaf shape. That could be a nice one. Let me let me look up cilantro. Gonna make some tacos. Oh, you guys, I just realized it is about that time to look at community entries. We almost finished. We almost finished the sketch. <laughs> Sam says, just make a brand name whimsical and get all the Behance sales. It's a million dollar idea, you guys. Let's all get in on it. <laughs> um, all right. Why not both? That's true. I might be able to fit in both in both like a little patch of both in there. Yeah, I guess we'll have to see how I feel after the stream. Um, but whoa, that was quick. I know, right? Oh my goodness, this stream went by so fast. Um, okay, you guys, let's look, let's go ahead and look at community entries. Um, we have a handful of them for um uh for this prompt. And I am so looking forward to showing them off. And if we have a little bit of extra time, I will um show some of the other entries that we got for the other prompts as well. Um, but I'm going to scroll all the way down uh, because we got one of the herbs very early on. And this rosemary is so pretty. Oh, my goodness. Um, this person uh, did all of the prompts for this month. And they did all of them kind of like in this very medieval, um, like very Renaissance style looking like paper. Um, and I love the the. Um, hand lettering that they did the kind of more like Renaissance style R and uh, just like the shapes with the, the blossoms on it. You don't see rosemary with blossoms very often. Uh, this is just beautiful. Um, and it has a very organic shape uh, to the, the sprig as well. Really love this one. Okay. Now let's scroll all the way back up. And uh, this one was really cute. We just got this one in earlier. Um, it's a little, it's a little ginger character. It's a little, it's a little kid in a little ginger costume. <laughs> it's very cute. I love it. Um, thank you so much for your uh, submission. I really love um, all the little texture lines and stuff. Um, and then like the little cut, cut off point from the ginger. And then he's got his little feet sticking out here on the bottom with the little leaves and stuff. It's so cute. I love the expression on the character's face too. It's so cute. Love it. <laughs> and also um, this one, uh, this person as well has done every single prompt. Um, love this entry. These uh, mute, uh, muted colors are really beautiful. Um, and so much detail in this piece. Oh my gosh. And even like a little fish tank and stuff in there. And then we got like a little jar with butterflies. And yeah, CJ, a monstera on the left. Um, really beautiful with the way that the roots are hanging down. And then it, they've also got like and like the little apothecary dra uh, drawers and books and a little witch's hat that's cute and a little uh, like a, a botany book and then hanging herbs of course on the walls as we were talking about earlier very cute and potted plants everywhere as well. I love that entry. Um, and then also this one is just stunning. Oh my gosh, this person has done multiple full scenes for my prompts and it's just absolutely incredible. Um, so much detail in this and the back, it looks like, uh, like a fiddle leaf fig tree and, um, like there's like the little mushroom poster on the wall and a little typewriter and the jars full of, full of different plants and, and the, the, the drawers bursting at the seams with all of the, the like little recipe cards and things like it just adds so much story behind just this one scene. Um, and they're kind of like doing different like little chemistry experiments and things with their herbs, or maybe they're just making tea, you know, maybe it's just like a really elaborate setup to make, to make homemade tea, who knows? <laughs> it's so beautiful though, the lighting on this, the textures too, oh my gosh, so beautiful. Um, and then we also have uh, this little entry as well. I love uh, the little tree and the little jar, and then it's like a, a squirrel type or like a little ferret or squirrel type character on the on the jar. I think this person has done every single prompt as well. Um, such a beautiful entry. I think they've also added in like this turquoise blue to all of their entries as well. Let me go to their profile. I think I remember. Um, yeah. So they have like this turquoise 
um, on all of their entries, which is really, really pretty. Um, and they did like a solid background for all of them and it kind of makes them look like they all go together in a, in a series, which is really cool. Um, yeah, thank you all so much for your entries. Um, they're all so beautiful. Um, oh, I also really cool entry from uh, Crispy Art Boy. He has done like 10 entries. He's done multiple entries for each prompt, which is just nuts to me. Um, but he did this one for Sword in the Stone. I thought it was such a cool rendition of it. Um, something that you don't really see very often. It kind of reminded me of uh, like Prince Eric's statue in Little Mermaid. Um, just like the stone with the carving in it underwater. Really, really cool. And then the, the sword is actually broken in the stone too. Very cool. Um, all right, you guys. Oh, and then also CJ did a little finger painting of a sword in, in fresco. I just loved it. I had to show it off before we say goodbye. I love it. <laughs> um, all right, you guys. Thank you so much for watching today. And again, uh, uh, look out for my new prompt list for April, which is coming up. It's themed April showers that will be posted on my Instagram probably sometime tomorrow. And I look forward to seeing your entries in the future. And thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful evening. See you later. Bye.